With our first 3D model under our belt, we're ready to start populating our game world with all the objects that will make up our gameplay. The player will rotate a missile launcher to shoot down enemy spaceships flying toward them. Each one of these objects, from the player to the ships to the missiles themselves, will be objects in our game. And for each one of these objects, we're going to want to do some of the same fundamental things. We'll want to draw them, so they'll have a model. We'll want to move them, so they'll need position. We'll want to rotate and scale them, so they'll have those properties as well. If you remember the 2D game tutorial, you'll know where I'm going with this. We'll want a game object class, just like the 2D game tutorial. It won't be exactly the same, since what we'll store for our game objects needs to be relevant to 3D instead of 2D, but the concept is similar. Reuse the code. Make it easy on yourself to add as many objects as you need. So, let's start by making this game object class. Like in the 2D game tutorial, we're going to put this class in a new.cs file. So, right click on your project in the Solution Explorer, select Add, and then New Item. From the dialog, select Class. Then, for the name, type GameObject.cs. Click Add. As in the 2D game tutorial, if you don't have the necessary using statements at the top of this GameObject.cs file, just copy them. Don't cut, just copy from the top of Game1.cs. Now we need to decide what goes in this class. Place your cursor just below the left curly brace under Class Game Object and add a new line. Then add the following lines Public, Model, lowercase model equals null. Public, Vector 3, Position equals Vector 3.0. Public, Vector 3, Rotation equals vector 3.0 public float scale equals 1.0f these four lines are the variables that we'll care about for our game objects they have a model which by default gets set to a value called null this is a special value that means does not have a value it's useful because you can check for this value specifically in conditionals if an object is null it usually means it's not initialized or otherwise not safe to use. When we initialize a game object, we'll initialize this model value and it will no longer be null, therefore it will be safe to use. The next variable is a vector 3 that tracks the position of the object. This will be one part of the world transform used to draw the object on the screen. The variable after that is another part of the world transform, the rotation. Rotation can also be expressed as a vector 3, though the components, x, y, and z, mean different things than they do in position. This will be discussed in detail later. Finally, scale is a floating point number. Scale refers to how big or small something is, and this value of scale will be used to make something bigger or smaller than it normally is by a multiple. If set to 1.0, which is its default, it won't change the scale of the game object. This type of scale is called uniform scale. The model will be made bigger or smaller all over. It won't just be stretched along one axis. This is the simplest kind of scale, and the only one we'll really need. So, our game object class is ready to go. We've already got an object that would make good sense to turn into one of these game objects, our terrain. Let's go to it. Switch back to your Game1.cs file by clicking the tab along the top of the code window, or double-clicking Game1.cs in the Solution Explorer. 